Hear, O Israel. First commandment, isn't it? Hear. Listen. First principle of life is to be listening. Which is a way of saying, isn't it, that your attention has been drawn to something. You're not just mindless. Hear, O Israel. But the name itself is Ra'el, Isis. Ra El Well Isis is the female very a female side Ra is the great sun god of Egypt That's your masculine side El well, that's all the, all the other gods, all the children. In other words, I'm addressing a complete person. Female side, male side, children. What we take to be a family when it's split up on earth. It is one unit. It's a person. We think of persons as um, individual people. But for completeness, they are the male and the female and the consequence. So I'm addressing whole person, what we would think of as whole families. Because, of course, if you address just one member of the family, then they're going to be alien to the rest. They're going to be on a different path. And that's disintegration instead of integration and oneness. Whereas we're on the evolutionary side of achieving the oneness, but a oneness of the harmony of the separate individual parts that bring their individuality. Whereas on the um, involution side, I think I'd be inclined to say devolution side, but anyway, on the involution side of God coming into creation, we're taking the oneness of God and uh, is dividing into an infinite number of parts, sparks of the divine, if you like, which we see as individual people. But ultimately, you see, we're to evolve back into the oneness, but with this infinite variety of identity. And we're saying to the whole, here, O Israel, the fullness of you. Take the fullness of you and concentrate, meditate, focus. It's calling our attention. But it's addressing us as a whole, all. Do you see from the very beginning God will have all in this glory, in this oneness? That is his original purpose. It's from eternity to eternity in a sense, at least from our perspective. 
not just that he's talking to you, or just that he's talking to the faithful, or just that he's talking to a particular race. He's talking to all. Hear, O Israel, the Lord. Mm. There's only one. The Lord, your, not anybody's, your one is only one. Speaking to the whole body, Of Israel, or the Lord thy God, your, the Lord your God, thy God, not anybody's, yours, yours that you own. What is it that you own of God? What pure God do you have? The Lord your God is one Lord. It's a funny way of saying it, isn't it? The Lord your God is one. You're utterly consistent. It's not a variety. It's singular. There's no ambiguity here. Yours is one particular view of God. It's not that you hold several views at once. It's one unified view. The Lord, your God, is one God. And thou, as you, shalt, or really should, it's a principle, must have no no other gods before me. You're not going to own anyone else's god before your god. And his oneness. Why? Because the basic principle you can't have anything but the truth of creation. Yours. Right, interrupt a sec. Do you see the whole start of the what we think of as the commandments is to tell you that your attention, your focusing, your concentration, your awareness, your continual awareness, focusing, is paramount. Listen. Continuously take this action here, here, focus, concentrate. Put your mind to. That's what's being said. Your mind forever wanders off. And the very essence of godliness is this ability to concentrate. When I mastered concentration, I became a genius. So able at school and at university and so on. Simply this ability to focus and concentrate it's what the Eastern people really meant by meditation. 
it is to hold one's whole awareness and mind on a particular object, if you like, thought, point. Might be looking at a flower, might be a sunset, might be closed eyes, might be the breath, watching the breath utterly focused. But to train your being to be able to focus and concentrate or you cannot think, and if you cannot think properly, your life disintegrates. This is who you are. Life is this astonishing ability to think, which is to focus the mind on a particular issue, to have it functioning. And when we think of what thinking is, it's usually relating something to something else, seeing its relationship, having a view of it that is functional, reasonable, reliable, as a truth about it. It's the very essence of being able to determine truth. Life is consistency, ongoing, consistent, not an endless series of random disconnected pictures or bits or parts that are just disintegrated and have no relation to each other. They have a relationship. Science is the study of relationships. What's the relationship between mm, the wind and the rain? We know the west wind brings rain. Oh, and you might try to find out why that is in terms of other relationships. Like, um, well, if it's, if they come across the sea and it hits your West Coast, then it's forced up and it drops the rain. You're looking for relationships. You're looking for the truth of something. The truth of the relationship that's reliable that you can build on. You're focusing on what is the relationship. And the commandments are your relationship to a life. And if you master it, you have life eternal. And if you don't, life disintegrates. It's not a command, it's actually principles of life. If the principles are not there, if they're not adhered to, if they're not kept, then life just disintegrates. Whereas we are on the evolutionary side, we are putting together we are putting together the separate parts of creation and making a wonderful whole. The wholeness of God again being made up of this plurality of individual parts. That is what creation is. God moves from a singularity to a singularity of plurality. Let me say that better. He moves from a singularity to an infinite plurality of unique parts coordinated into a single unity Again. His eternal self now made up of a trillion, trillion, trillion parts, all coordinated perfectly. A fantastic family, you see. What is a family? It's a male and a female coming together. It's a 
lack of completeness again. And what's the result? Children. And what's the ideal family? They're in harmony. It's the same story. This is the principle of life that God is following. He has devolved himself, scattered into the universe of uncertainty, a million sparks of himself, billion, billion, billion sparks. And he brings them into a coordinated, harmonious oneness. And it's that bringing together what we call life here on earth, this struggle to, to live, is actually the struggle for harmony of our individuality with each other, that we make one harmonious. Fantastic person again, made up of, utterly harmonious individual parts. Each part is complete. Each part is unique, has a unique part to play. Each part ultimately perfectly designed and made according to its utter harmony in the infinite oneness of God. That's what creation is about. That's what evolution is about. The pre-evolution stage is God separating out his oneness into a trillion, trillion, trillion parts. If you like, it's the Genesis story. We think of Genesis as the mm, development of man. Well, it is in a sense, but it's it's the pre pre uh, what do you call it? Tra transitory. Um, well, no, it's a transitory state, but it's the pre state to the material where God, the unmanifest. Utterly in unity, divides himself that he may be a plurality. That's the devolution part or the involution into this material world. And this material world is the um, conception coming forth of those individual parts maintaining their individuality but in harmony coming into a harmony a oneness and that's the eternal purpose if you like of the transitory, the world of the, the universe of the transitory things, constantly changing into this, generating new children to this harmony. Do you see the devolution side, uh, involution? He's dissolved himself into the universe of uncertainty. split himself up into a myriad number of separate parts. He's constantly producing children here. And they're going through a harmonization, a training process, a, a coming together, a, a maturity, where they learn to harmonize 
so that they may be added to the oneness of heaven, adult heaven, the heavenly host. That's what we are in the process of here. We are evolving into that harmony, becoming part of that harmony. God has dissolved himself here into a whole crowd of us continually. Um, it's the ongoing conception process of children for the vast heavenly host family of heaven. God's complete self, ever growing in completeness. more and more ever being added to it, probably at an ever-increasing rate. There is no end to this eternal prosperity of life that God is. He is life for all live unto him. He is our God. God of the living. So we start the discourse from God with here, concentrate, focus, think, rationalize, seek truth. Here, O Israel. And funny enough, the O we can think of is perfect and infinite completeness. It's not just Israel, it's our Israel. Now you may think, oh, you're making much of a detail, but uh, the life is in the detail very often. Um, it can speak to us because Well, the words are in miraculous. They are able to lead us to life eternal, you see. So, even the details have this utter sovereignty of God in them. All lives unto him. There's no waste. Everything counts. Everything is harmonized. All. No exceptions. All. We are ever in this process of the all coming into complete harmony. It's an astonishing universe, this one. This universe, the uncertainty, is absolutely astonishing in what it's achieving. As befitting, of course, an all-powerful, wonderfully loving, creative God. Our God. Love you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Heavenly Father. You see, in, um, geographically related terms, it is, Israel was um, a sort of a, a wild place compared to Egypt. Egypt has the, uh, the, the ruling gods Isis and Ra, and um, they're the source, the parents of this, this wayward child. The Hebrew. And 
they're the prodigal. The, the, the wayward child is the prodigal. It leaves Egypt and goes off into a far country. And uh, its life is, well, it's a waste. It's, it's nothing like the affluence and the success of um, Egypt, the parents back home. And the story, the Old Testament, is the story of this child seeking out maturity, harmony, with its superpower neighbor. Its parents on the one side, Isis and Ra, Egypt, and hostility on the other, as seen from the parents' point of view, of course, of, um, well, it could be the Hittite kingdom, it could be uh, a whole variety of, I mean, it could be the, the Assyrian, the Persian, the, uh, and, and so forth, Babylonians, and all the rest of it, the world. So, the child, Israel, is, is struggling to find a harmony with the parents, despite the inharmonious warring of these other nations, who are, of course, basically against the parents. And that includes, therefore, walking over the children to get there. You know, the army's got to go through Israel. If it's on land, anyway. So the history of the nation and the geography of it is used to speak the spiritual truth into our lives. that we come from one particular couple of parents, Isis and Ra. And they have, well in fact they have lots of little gods, L, lots of L. But they've got to mature. so that they can return in a harmony. And we, we've seen the Old Testament story as coming out of Egypt, as if Egypt were alien and um, satanic from the Christian point of view, and I think the Jewish point of view too. And that's our fallen state, that we see our parents as alien to us, something to be got away from, instead of being honoured. There's the root of who we are, they're our parents. And um, we're still in the Bible looking at the story of being alien, away from, going off into the far country. And if we want long life, we have to honor our parents. If you want life eternal, you have to come back. The prodigal has to return. He comes back in a poverty that's met by the parents showering blessings upon him. You know, puts a ring on his finger, a robe on him, and 
fills him up with good food and has a, has a party, has a ball. Welcomes him back. That's the eternal life. Yeah. This is what the Jesus story is about. The great return. And it's return on a recognition of God being our true Father. In the story. You know, his mother's at the cross, Mary. On the earth, where he's been brought up, trained by mum, mother nature if you like, but you know, he ascends to heaven, his father, in other words the manifest is before him, Mother Nature, and the unmanifest, the uncreate, is in heaven, which is within him. And the result is the resurrection, he's glorified. The glory he had with God before the world was. Because he's a spark of the divine, if you like. He's a child of God, but a child that's come to maturity. And he's endowed with all the glory of God. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Well, one can discourse endlessly on any single part of divine word. Um, but there's no need to simply to focus on it. We'll always feed the focused mind with all that is appropriate. Um, there's no need to read or listen to every other person's endless discourse. It's true they will all add more, but you can do it yourself directly. Just hear, O oh Israel. Listen, focus, think upon, be constantly aware of. Life eternal is an infinite, ever-growing consciousness. Consciousness of, of what? Of truth. Of what the relationships are in this staggering creation. And in knowing such, being equipped to enter into the creativity of it, ever adding to it. It's the reflection of the uncreated. On 
omniscient, omnipresent, omnipotent. Person of God. Reflected on the screen of the created. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Our daily life is quite simply our ongoing awareness of this reality that's ever with us. We are expression of this reality. Life itself. Thank you, Heavenly Father. I shall add that thinking is this process of accessing God's mind. All thoughts come from God. And yourself is this ability to draw certain thoughts according to your values. According to your values, they are the thoughts that come into your mind when you think. <laughs> and much of the time, people are quite mindless. We all are. Here, O oh Israel, be complete in this hearing. Be aware your relationship to God. Relate to me, hear, hear me, relate to me. Focus on me a moment, focus on me. Draw my thoughts to you, that you be transformed accordingly, that your values be transformed into life eternal the harmony with all that is, all that I am. Mm. Thank you, Heavenly Father.